Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so I record this for a summary on my mode. Hope uh, this will help you um, to understand MIMO better and help you with your coursework. So first of all, let's uh, look at two examples. The first one is a simple uh, MIMO transmission scheme. So the first step is to identify system parameters and uh, simple transmission patterns. Suppose we have ARM transmitter antennas and we modulate ARM symbols. We transmit them over one time slot. Okay, so in the uh, in the future time slots or in the future symbol durations, we repeat this pattern, but we transmit new symbols. Okay, so for each antenna, we modulate a uh, one symbol and then transmit it uh, through uh, during one symbol duration. So we have ARM transmit antennas, N receive antennas, and ARM modulated symbols. Uh, and uh, we use one uh, time slot for this pattern. Okay, so receive signal model. So that's the second step. We need to model the signal received as the N's receive antenna. Okay, so for each receive antenna, you will receive uh, all the signals transmitted from uh, all the transmitted antennas. So we have ARM transmitted symbols they go through uh, separate, separate uh, fading channels, but they add together as a, as a receiver. You cannot separate them. They will interfere with each other. So HNM would uh, uh, model the fading from the ARM's transmit antenna to the N's receive antenna. So this is the second step, and this is a noise. So for example, if I have two transmit antennas, and a, a one receive antenna, then we only receive one symbol. And this symbol comes from uh, the, the first modulated symbol transmitted from the first transmit antenna. And then the second modulated symbol from the second transmit antenna, they go through fading and then arrive at the receiver at the same time. Now, the third step is to put them in matrix form. So that later on, we can use matrix inverse to cancel the effect of fading. So the input is uh, a vector of all the transmitted symbols. And then the output uh, is um, uh, the signal that you received as the uh, N receive antennas. And then H is a, mo uh, uh, is a fading matrix. And this is a noise matrix. So for example, if I have two transmit antenna and one receive antenna, so we have one receive antenna, we only receive one symbol. And then these two transmitted symbols, they go through fading. And uh, the first row, first column, uh, multiplied together, we have, uh, this is equivalent to equation one, uh, equivalent to the example here. And uh, equation two is equivalent to equation one, okay? And then the next step is, uh, uh, so if we have a STVC design, then we want to manipulate the receive signal model a little bit. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But from, for, the, for, for this a basic MIMO transmission, we don't need this step. And then the next step, so as a receiver, uh, you. Assume you know the fading matrix, you know the fading matrix, but you, you don't know what was transmitted. So you have the received uh, signal vector and you know the fading matrix. So uh, in order to cancel the, the effect of fading, the first first thing we, we'd like to do is to do correlation operation, which is to apply Hermitian transpose onto the fading matrix and then mult multiply this onto the receive signal vector. So, so the so what you have would be you would have this uh, correlation matrix for fading. So this R in front of X. So you don't know X, but you know receive signal vector, and then you can obtain this uh, new equivalent. Uh, receive signal vector, which is the output from the correlation operation. Okay, so you have this. Uh, 
And uh, so eventually, if you want to detect uh, what was transmitted, you need to cancel this co uh, correlation matrix. So you do a matrix uh, inverse here, and then Z is a direct function of X, and then the rest is noise. So from the receiver's point of view, it would be as if the transmitter only trans transmitted all the symbols here and then experienced an equivalent AWN channel. And then you have Z. So you can use Z to directly detect X. Uh, but actually, you didn't change the transmission pattern. Uh, the receiver can only manipulate, uh, can do uh, manipulation on the receive signal better with the knowledge of the fading matrix. Okay, so this is the first transmission pattern. The second example we are going to look at uh, first is Alamotis STVC. So the transmission pattern is uh, in table three. So we transmit X1, X2 over two uh, transmit alternates during the first time slot. So originally, uh, for the original uh, MIMO pattern, the second for the next time slot, we should transmit new symbols. But now for the STVC uh, transmission pattern, uh, the whole pattern would last for two symbol durations. And you trans transmit certain uh, form of repetition. So X1, uh, you transmit it by transmit alternate one during the first time slot. And then during the second time slot, we transmit X1 conjugate on the second uh, transmit antenna. So this gives us diversity. What is diversity? You have two transmit antennas, and then you have one receive antenna. So you tra transmit X1 over the first time uh, slot uh, by the first transmit antenna. And then you transmit X1 conjugate on the second uh, antenna during the second time slot. So there is repetition. So the receiver would have multiple copies of the same signal. In this way, if one channel is in deep fade, the other channel can still save the signal transmission. I hope that makes sense. So when you transmit X1 in the first time slot, and then transmit S1 conjugate uh, by a different antenna in the second time slot, we didn't transmit new information. The reason we, we use conjugate and negative sign here is that if you put this into matrix, this is a unitary matrix. What is unitary matrix? So X, Hermitian transpose, multiply X, it would become a scaled version of uh, an, ident an identity matrix, identity matrix. So this make signal transmission also known to each other. Um, this will benefit or manipulate uh, signal processing as a receiver later. So as a receiver, we want to manipulate the receive signal uh, in order to decouple the two data st streams. So this is a beneficial uh, feature that we're going to utilize later. So you can have different designs for STVC as long as this is unitary matrix. As a receiver, you wouldn't have interference at all. So the first step is to identify uh, system parameters and uh, transmission pattern. So you have, uh, oh, sorry, that's SIMO. So STVC is here. So you have two transmit antennas, one receive antenna. You have two modulated symbols. Okay. Um, let me check. Okay. Um, and then you have two symbol period. The uh, signal transmission pattern is table three. So this this one STV, STVC trans, transmission would last for two symbol period. And then for the next uh, uh, STBC transmission, you transmit, re repeat this pattern. You use two transmit antenna 
uh, and the two times slot again for two new modulated symbols. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so the receive signal model uh, is the second step. So we uh, doing the first time slot. So we assume we only have one receiver antenna, right? So during the first time slot, we have this and uh, uh, this receive signal. So we transmit X1, X2 over two antennas. So X, X1, X2 over two uh, antennas during the first time slot. And then in the second time slot, we transmit a uh, negative X2 uh, conjugate and X1 conjugate. So it's like this, X2 conjugate, X1 conjugate, and then we receive Y2. So this is receive signal model. And then the third step is to put this into a matrix form. So we transmitted this unit unitary matrix. And uh, and this uh, transmission has, uh, has gone through the fading channel, which has uh, two transmit antennas and one receive antenna. And then for the single receive antenna over two time slots, you have this receive signal vector. So this is an input output relationship. So this is a tricky part. As a receiver, uh, the receiver uh, cannot change uh, the transmission pattern here. So the receiver would have received Y1 and Y2 receiver would know h1 and h2 okay so what the receive receiver wants is to uh, e essentially the receiver wants to uh, uh, demodulate x1 and x2 but y1 y2 they are not uh, separate functions of x1 and x2 so uh, y1 is a function of x1 and x2 y2 is also a function of x1, s2. Eventually, we want to separate them. So now, uh, what we want is uh, the proper, so the receiver can do some uh, manipulation on the receive signal, and it knows uh, channel metrics, so it can rearrange channel metrics. So the purpose of this step is to obtain an input output relationship, which has modulated symbols without repetitions as input. So here, we want uh, to for this input output model, we want to have only x1 and x2. So that they can be e easily detected in the in the next steps. So if we look at uh, equation nine and 10, so as a receiver, we have y1. Uh, so for equation nine, we can see y1 equals to h1, x1. Uh, plus h2 x2 and the noise, right? So in this equivalent form, we have y1 equals to h1 x1 plus h2 x2 and then a noise. So we didn't change anything here. It's still equivalent to uh, equation nine. So what's tricky about y2 is that if you extend y2 based on equation nine, what you will get is y2 equals to h1 and then negative conjugate on x2 and then h2 conjugate on x1. So eventually we want to detect x1, x2 without a repetition, without those conjugate signs. So what we can do is we can apply conjugate on the receive signal. And then the input output relationship would become, so here y2 conjugate should be, so conjugate h1 multiply uh, negative x2. So here negative h1, and then we have x2 without conjugate. And then here we have h2 conjugate multiply uh, x1. So if we apply conjugate here, then this become h2 conjugate and no conju conjugate on x1. So what we have here is h2 conjugate multiply x1. 
So if you extend equation nine and ten, you will see that they are equivalent to each other. But if equation ten will be easier for the receiver to uh to demodulate just x one s two without uh worrying about repetitions in the input model. Hope hope that makes sense. So receiver can manipulate uh receive signal uh and also uh, manipulate uh, the metrics for for, for fading um, and with the purpose. The purpose is to obtain an input output relationship where the input doesn't have repetitions and then it shouldn't have those conjugate signs or should, should all shouldn't have negative signs so that it will be easier for the receiver to uh, detect to aim to detect just this vector. Okay, so next step is correlation operation. So now you have you have uh, this fading matrix. You apply Hermitian transpose on this fading matrix and then multiply this onto the uh, equivalent receive signal here. So what you get is the correlation matrix for the fading become a scaled identity matrix. This is such a good news. Because equation nine here will have unitary matrix property for the transmission uh, transmitted uh, signal matrix, but equation ten from equation nine to equ equation ten, we transform the unitary matrix property from the signal transmission to the fading matrix. Okay, so actually everything the receiver did was to apply. Uh, conjugate on the second symbol, and then rearrange the fading matrix, and then apply Hermitian transpose of this fading matrix onto this vector. And now we arrive at this uh, input output relationship where we have identity matrix. So there is no interference at all. So if we put this into equation 11, we get equation uh, 13, where Z1 is only a function of x1. So this is a constant. And z2 is only a function of x2. So we can separate them now. So it's almost like we transmit x1 and then received uh, z1 without encountering any interference. And equivalently, we transmit x2 and then receive uh, z2. This is from receiver's perspective after manipulating, uh, uh, after signal processing, it didn't change the signal transmission pattern. So from equation nine to equation 14, uh, we didn't really uh, change the transmission pattern. So equation nine is e completely equivalent to equation 10. And then we just do signal processing based on the receive signal and the fading matrix. And then eventually, uh, these two uh, data streams, these two symbols, they are decoupled. So now we want to summarize. Uh, we want to summarize uh, the steps for MIMO transceiver design. So first of all, we want to uh, identify what is the type of MIMO. We need to identify all the system parameters: how many transmit antenna, how many receive antenna how many modulated symbol you have transmitted over how many time slots. And you want to, uh, 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 you, you want to identify the signal transmission pattern. And secondly, you need to model the signal receive signal uh, for each receive antenna uh, that's received from multiple transmit antennas over fading channel. And thirdly, you need to put uh, all the symbols into matrix. Uh, so you need to model uh, the second step in a matrix form so that we can do signal processing. We can either do the matrix inverse or utilize the unitary matrix property later. So we need matrix form. And then next is uh, what is the desired input output relationship without repetition. So if it's STVC, we want a, a clean input output relationship. So 
as a receiver, you can apply maybe conjugate on Y2, and that would give you a, and also manipulate the fading matrix. That would give you a very uh, simple input uh, signal vector for, from the receiver's point of view. And the fifth step is to cancel the effect of fading. So you do correlation operation, which is Hermitian transpose onto the fading matrix and then multiply it with the receive signal. And, the, and then in the end, you want to cancel the effect of fading, uh, in fact, uh, uh, effect of uh, uh, interference uh, by matrix inverse. So if uh, from this step, the fading matrix, the correlation matrix of the fading is not identity matrix, it's not scaled identity matrix, then there will be interference. So you need to do another matrix inverse here. So you don't need to do matrix inverse on identity matrix anymore because matrix inverse on identity matrix is still identity matrix, right? So um, so yeah, these are the steps. Uh, let's look at more examples. Uh, so another simple example is SIMO. So you have one transmit antenna and the N receive antennas. So you only transmit one symbol over one simple duration. So the single transmission pattern is table two. You actually just transmit one symbol uh, over one uh, time slot or over one symbol duration. In the full in the in the future symbol durations, you repeat this pattern but modulate new symbols. Okay. So the receive signal for the for each receive antenna, you have a form like this. And then you put this into matrix form, that's step three. And then next step, uh, there is no STVC uh, transmission pattern. You only have one transmit antenna for this scheme. So you can skip uh, this step. And the next step, you do correlation operation to see if you uh, get uh, like a scaled identity matrix. Uh, what you actually have is uh, actually just one constant. It's uh, identity matrix of dimension one. So it's only one uh, fading equivalent fading um, factor here. So there is no interference. You actually only transmit one symbol. So you can directly use that to demodulate X. Uh, so there is no need for the correlating operation because there is no interference. Okay, uh, another example. Uh, so if I have STBC, uh, Alamotis STBC, which use two transmit antennas, but now we have unreceived antennas. Okay, so the number of modulated symbol which has me two modulated symbols over two time slots. The transmission pattern is the same as before, but now we have N receive antennas. So what we do is we model, first of all, uh, for the second step, we model the signal received at each receive antenna uh, in the same way as before. And then we put this into matrix form, the same way as before. And then we stack, uh, all the received signals into a big matrix. So we get a big input output relationship for having two transmit antennas and the N receive antennas. The transmission pattern is a unitary matrix. And this is a fading matrix. Okay, so uh, so now if we want to derive the equivalent STBC model. Now for each receive antenna, so you have you you want this clean input uh, signal vector, and then you manipulate the fading uh, factors because you know them. Um, and uh, for each receive antenna, so so this uh, is equivalent to equation nine here. But this is for each receive antenna, so we will have a uh, unreceive antennas now. And next step is to stack them together. Now we have unreceive antennas. 
And for this equivalent uh, input output relationship, the input is only a vector. So before the input is a unitary matrix, but now after some manipulations here, the input is uh, uh, only a vector. A next step is to do a correlation operation. So uh, if you extend this uh, correlation matrix for fitting a uh, channel, then you will, you will arrive at a identity, scaled version of identity matrix. So eventually you only have two decision variables if you are demodulate two symbols. There is no need for decorrelating operation um, because we have identity matrix here. So, um, so it's really important that you um, you write down these equations uh, step by step by yourself. It's really, really important that you, you write down these equations by yourself uh, step by step. Uh, it would help you to understand for the exams and also help you to uh, 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 get the ideas for the coursework. So how to apply these, uh, these steps for coursework? So now for the coursework, we have, uh, let's take a look at the coursework. Uh, yeah. So for the coursework, you have uh, uh, six, six users, and each user would have four transmit antennas. And then the there is one receiver, but the receiver has uh, six, uh, I think, six receiver antennas. So this parameter seems quite comprehensive. It looks a little bit complicated, but uh, Let's do it step by step. The first thing we identify that for each user will need a STBC uh, transmission pattern. So I provide you with some candidate uh, patterns here. And there is, a, so if you Google STBC, you'll find different types of STBC uh, that use different uh, transmission patterns, okay? Uh, so the, uh, here is a reference. Uh, so this in this paper, there are some ICPC transmission patterns as well. So you, you uh, so uh, I hope I hope you you will try different transmission patterns, and uh, all all of these different patterns they can achieve good BR performance results that leads to a full full mark perfect score. Um, if you can do a compar comparative study, uh, compare the performance of different transmission pattern, um, I will be really happy. I will be really uh, impressed. Uh, if you, all of you use the same transmission pattern, I will be quite uh, uh, quite sad. Um, but anyway, uh, the important thing is you choose a transmission pattern here for four antennas. And now you have six users, they all transmit their own uh, symbols. And the second step is to model the receive signal model. So in your coursework, it's already given to you uh, here. This is the input-output relationship uh, that models uh, uh, the, the, the MIMO transmission in, my, uh, my, uh, in matrix form, okay? So receive signal model and the MIMO matrix form. And the fourth step is if you want to utilize the STBC, uh, sorry, STBC uh, transmission pattern, uh, you can do an equivalent input output relationship. Where the, for the input vector, there is no repetition. Okay, so you, you can you, you can apply this step to your transmission pattern. Alternatively, you can skip this step and directly rely on this uh, model. So for this model, eventually you have to do matrix uh, inverse to cancel the effect of fading, right? And then what you're left with is a big uh, decision matrix, big Z, which is uh, some function of big X and then noise. So if you if you don't do steps four, 
what you have for the input uh, metrics is uh, there will be repetitions. So for example, if you use this pattern, uh, so this one and this one, they contain the same information. So how do we deal with repetitions? So we have Z one one and Z two two. So all the diagonal uh, uh, elements, they correspond to some form of X one. So you can either use a big uh, a Z that has the biggest power to demodulate uh, X1 uh, in the corresponding position, or you can average on all the, uh, all the decision variables as corresponding to X1. But you need to be careful that for Z22, you need to apply conjugate here so that it corresponds to X1. It doesn't correspond to X1 conjugate to do an average on all of them. I hope, um, I hope this is clear. So there are different methods. Uh, so you can also do a comparative study on different uh, methods. Um, so they would have different performance results. I will mark on your best performance results but uh, trying different uh, methods, different patterns would really improve your understanding on MIMO. Okay, so next step is correlation operation. So correlation operation, if you do it based on step three, so if you skipped step four, then what you have would be uh, the original transmission transmitted matrix. And then you have a correlation matrix for the fading channel. And alternatively, you can apply correlation operation based on the input output relationship um, obtained from step four. So you have this. So uh, now, um, because you have multiple users, you have six users, even though within each user, there's no interference anymore. Across different users, there will still be interference. So what you will see is that uh, whether you use this method or this method, this correlation uh, matrix and this correlation matrix, they wouldn't be identity matrix. So you need to perform the correlating operation anyway. So in the end, you apply correlation operation and then detect uh, the transmitted matrix based on this. So this is uh, based on the input output relationship uh, of uh, uh, of step three. Alternatively, you do it based on the input output relationship um, obtained from uh, step four. Okay, so so this this is the correlating operation. You can also use other methods. As uh, for example, there is MIC uh, in the slides. So the slides. Uh, so for the last uh, on the last page, you will see this is a uh, decorrelating uh, operation, right? Uh, you can replace this by um, by a MMFC uh, matrix. So. So if you look at this reference, it will be uh, introduced in here. So MIC uh, uh, detector would perform better than the correlating operation. And some some people asked uh, if they can use ML detection. You can use ML detection, but I don't think it's really possible or it will, uh, the detection will be too complex. So running time for, for your simulation would be really long because you have six users. And so if you do ML detection, you need to make a joint decision on all the symbols transmitted by six users. Uh, I don't think that's really possible uh, or it is possible it will take a long time to run. So I really don't recommend uh, this method. Um, so, okay, that's all for, for this part of uh, introduction. If you have any questions, 
uh, any random thoughts, any, any random questions, feel free to send me an email. Okay.